Welcome back to Intro Linguistics. Uh, today we're going to start phonetics, and it's going to be a very basic phonetics video. We're not going to do any transcription yet. I'm just going to introduce you to what phonetics is all about. So we'll talk about the types, uh, the basics of transcription, and what the different sound classes are. Uh, this will be mainly for English in this course, but I might expand to other languages a little bit later. So there's two main types of phonetics. Uh, one is acoustic phonetics, and this investigates the physical properties of sounds. So here we have something called a spectrogram, and what it does is it looks at something called formance, which is uh, a property of sounds, and it makes it a little bit darker where your formants are. So this word is a Japanese word, minato, and this spectrogram gives you the frequency over time. So clearly, you know, it might, the word would start about here, would end about here. You can see uh, some vowels going on in this region. And this little empty space is most likely the T sound right here. So this is not the type of phonetics we're going to look at because you don't know the first thing about sounds yet. So how can you analyze something like this when you don't know well, how sounds are made or the different types of sounds? So instead, we're gonna focus on articulatory phonetics. And this is investigating how the sounds are produced. So on the right here, you see something called a mid-sagittal diagram of the head and the vocal tract. So with sounds, your sound first starts somewhere down in the lungs. Obviously, we don't have the lungs here, but, you know, it makes sense. Your, your first part of your speech starts with the air in your lungs, and that's what we call the source. Then it moves up through the larynx. And in this area right here, either your, your vocal folds will vibrate or they won't. And that will change part of the sound. Then, when it moves up into the oral cavity or the nasal cavity, which are these two paths here, uh, your tongue and your lips and your teeth are going to play different roles in shaping the sound, and we call that the filter, because your tongue, your teeth, your lips, and your velum are going to change the sound and give you the different sounds. So I'm not sure how many of you have actually sat alone with your mouth and played around and made some blockings in random places and you know, have tried to see what sounds you can make. But if you do that, you can come up with a lot of different sounds. And you'll come up with sounds that aren't in the language, and you'll come up with sounds that are almost nearly impossible to do, or are just never used. So this is the basics of articulatory phonetics. So you don't need to know too much about this diagram right now. Uh, that would be more a little bit later. All right, so what is transcription? In fact, why do we need transcription? Why can't we deal with just the English words and have them like that and say, okay, well, you know, with the word threat and meat, uh, EA, this, the problem here is that these make two different sounds. We have threat and meat. So we want to be able to treat these as different sounds. Like we have this epsilon for the S sound and we have this lowercase i for the E sound. So we can distinguish the vowels with this phonetic transcription. Now, what's really important is that this phonetic transcription is unique for each sound. So this epsilon here will never make any other sound ever. And the second part is that across languages, these symbols are consistent. So we can do any language with these symbols. And if you can read the phonetic alphabet, then if any other language is presented in the phonetic alphabet, you should be able to pronounce the words flawlessly. So that's very cool. And of course we need this because, I mean, English orthography is terrible for mapping letters to sounds. Other languages, not so much, but it's good to have some sort of universal alphabet that we can all understand. So for instance, we have two words here, thought and though. Now, you probably have never noticed that these are actually two completely different sounds. Uh, thought, we do with a theta symbol, a lowercase theta, for a th sound. 
and though we do this thing called an edth, and it looks like this. And there's not much difference between these two sounds. Uh, one is voiced, so in though, you're vibrating your vocal cords, and in thought, you're not. That's the only difference between these two sounds. But there is a distinction to be made there, and it's important that our phonetic alphabet and our transcriptions will show the difference. Okay, so what is this phonetic alphabet I'm talking about? This is the international phonetic alphabet right here. So what does it show? Well, we have a bunch of consonants, and every space where there's gray in it, we can never make an articulation there. It is impossible to make that kind of sound. All the ones with the white boxes, perfectly fine. So each individual letter here, so this P, is called a phoneme, and this is one unit of sound. So we have a P for P, a B for B, an M for M, and a lot of these are pretty obvious. But then we get into some weird ones, like we've seen right here, this one's a th for th thought, and this one's a th for though. Uh, we also have some other sounds in our language, like sh and z. Then, of course, there's ones that aren't in English, so we don't have a trill, we don't have bilabial fricatives, we don't have these ones, uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And, of course, there are others, but we'll get to those eventually. So, what does the chart show other than this? Well, the top part's erased, I can't necessarily fix that, but this top line right here, shows where the sound is created and on the left here it shows the type of sound it is so a nasal bilabial is something that where your lips are closed and the air goes through your nose so that's mm. and if you play around with that you'll be able to see that yeah your lips are closed and the air goes through your nose what about um Let's pick another sound here. What about this sound, this velar sound? Well, this is near the back of your throat, and the air is going to go through your nose again. So you get mm, as in sing. Mm. So that's another cool sound. Uh, these sounds will be more in detail in the next video. I just wanted to show that to you. And of course, we have vowels. Vowels are different. Um, the only thing unique about vowels is tongue placement. So this whole section right here is about where your tongue is in your mouth. And the shape of your lips and your tongue are the only things that change the vowels. So the difference between an E and an OO, the only thing that's different is where your tongue is. And that's kind of crazy. Well, E and OO also has a little bit of lip rounding. But if we unround our lips, so we go from OO to Oo, then e and u the only difference is the tongue placement so you know it's pretty cool uh, there's some other things here we have clicks like uh, we have voiced implosives where you suck in when you make the sound we have ejectives where you puff air out of your mouth when you make the sounds uh, there's some other symbols here that we're not going to deal with and things called supra segmentals over here which are um, ways that we denote stress, long syllables, and where uh, syllables break. And then there's a bunch of other diacritics that change things, but again, this is more for advanced phonetics, and we won't be dealing with this, or any of this, or any of this. So those are things you can explore a little bit later. So that's the International Phonetic Alphabet. Um, what I am going to show you in the next few videos in this course are the English sounds in the consonants and the English sounds in the vowels. So that's what we'll be focusing on. So there are two different types of transcriptions. Uh, one is general and one is more specific. So we call the general transcriptions phonemics transcriptions. So these are just the phonemes on their own. So said Carl, this is how I would write said Carl uh, as a, you know, sort of an average way.
that a population would say that. Um, an individual speaker or a phonetic transcription is more precise. So you'll see diacritics, like things I didn't want to put in the video, or in this course. So this means that this D is voiceless, so it's not quite a T, but it's very close to it. Uh, this H means that the K is aspirated. This happens in English. Uh, this colon here means that the A is a little bit longer, so you have AW instead of AW. And this L is something called a dark L. And we make the distinguish between regular L's and dark L's in English. And I'll go over that in the phonology part. But phonetics are a little bit more narrow. So a lot more precise and something you can't necessarily do by ear all the time. So we're going to focus on phonemic transcriptions because getting the basis is quite important. There is a distinction too that I should point out. Um, phonemic always have the brackets around them, so are the slashes, front slashes, and phonetic always have the square brackets around them. So there is a difference and it's important to be consistent. All right, the last thing we should talk about are the different sound classes. Now, these are a little bit different than what you're taught in class because we're dealing with sounds and we're not dealing with letters. So really, there should be slashes on all of these sounds all the way through, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm ignoring them. So first we have consonants. Now, consonants are defined as having an obstruction in the mouth. So there has to be some limitation of air in the mouth. It can't just be free-flowing. If the air is free-flowing and only the tongue is moving, we'll call that a vowel. So there's very little obstruction, and of course you have to play around with your mouth a little bit. What I have listed here is most of the vowels of English. Now I know in school you're taught A-E-I-O-U. It's kind of wrong. The letters do make vowel sounds, but we have a lot more than five different vowel sounds. We have A, I, A, U, A, E, A, I, U, O, I. And I believe we might have one or two more that I just didn't write down. For instance, what we saw earlier, epsilon for E, and I'm sure there's probably one more I'm missing. So we have a lot of vowels. The last thing that's exciting is we have glides. And glides are a mixture of a consonant and a vowel, and these are letters like Y and W. So I know you hear sometimes Y, so this we write with a J. It's a palatal sound Y, it's a J. Uh, I'm not sure, it's just convention. So the sound yes, that's the Y sound, that's always going to be Y. And this is W, and W is a glide. W is more of a vowel than it is a consonant, and it is a glide. It is a semi-vowel, you can say. You can also call these semi-vowels. And that's something you never hear in English class. Like, yeah, sometimes Y, they never say sometimes W, but W is a glide. You can have a word in English like this and pronounce it. This is the word quum. It's fine. In fact, we can transcribe this word, quum. Doesn't necessarily have a vowel in it, but it's a semi-vowel, and it's good enough. In fact, here's something a little bit tricky. We always say sometimes y is a vowel, but then we have the word my. And what's interesting about this is when we transcribe it, we transcribe it like this. <laughs> this isn't a y, this is an i sound. And yet this W sound, when you say yes, on its own, it's never necessarily a vowel sound. In fact, when we say sometimes Y in English, it almost never corresponds to this Y sound that we have as a glide. So kind of interesting. The Y orthographically, and when I say orthographically, I mean in English writing, usually makes this I sound. So... Bug your English teachers. W is also sometimes a vowel. That's important. It's not really important, but it's a cool thing that will probably bug your English teachers, and it's going to be great. <laughs> if, if they say give an example word, say you don't have to because a linguist told you, and linguists are right. 
Okay, so that was pretty much the basics. Uh, next time we're going to talk about consonants a lot more specifically. We'll talk about how we make consonants, and we'll talk about how to transcribe the basic consonants. So, by the end of the video, you should have a good grasp of how you should transcribe consonants. Of course, you'll need practice. It's not going to come right away, so it will be a little bit of studying to memorize the symbols and do practice words, but I'll try to do the best that I can. So, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to share it, like it, do whatever you want. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below. This has been Trevor from TrevTutor.com, and I'll hopefully see you guys for some more phonetics, because this stuff is really cool.